And now, around the world and around the corner, it's the David Bowers Awards, bringing the best in indie music to millions of listeners worldwide with your host, the David Bowers. We've got a fantastic lineup of guests, as well as our engineer extraordinaire, Nick the Geek, our entire crew here at the Asylum, and me, I'm John Bon Jovial. And now, here's the voice of indie music, the David Bowers. Thank you very much, and welcome back once again, my friends, to the David Bowers Awards. Welcome to everyone around the world, and of course, our listeners in Rochester, New York, who listen to us through the courtesy of of WRFZ FM 106.3, better known as Rochester Free Radio, where uh, we really we really have a following up there, and we are so happy to have all of our Rochester, New York listeners with us. And uh, if you listeners around the world, wherever you are, if you want to drop us a line and let us know where you're listening from, we'll be more than happy to uh, mention you on the air as we do our friends in Rochester. This is not just a, uh, uh, you know, this isn't just a political thing where we only mention the one. Uh, we'd be happy to mention uh, wherever you are, as uh, we have in the past. But, uh, yeah, let us know where you're listening from, because we'd like to know where our listeners are hiding so we can stalk you and come out and track you down and make you listen to some great new indie music, like, for example... Cowtown Blues by James Lee Baker. I was raised in a cow town. The Bible Belt had me tied down. I told myself I would leave one day. But then she came along and here I stay. Our breeze is rolling in That's the smell of money in the wind There's hailstorms and tumbleweeds No wonder there ain't no trees Out at the Cadillac Ranch You can paint a caddy with a spray can It sure ain't the promised land They bury perfectly good cars in the sand It's their way to say That you won't get away No There's nothing that you can do About the Cowtown Blue public pool in the summer after high school we didn't make any college plans too busy with these idle hands she was the preacher's youngest kid a sweet face and a body made for sin far from the deep blue sea just heard the devil done with me if I didn't get down Cowtown Blues, the Cowtown Blues. Hey! Look at her in that pink dress, sitting in the pew like a princess, a crooked halo on her.
the Cowtown Blues. The Cowtown Blues. <laughs> Blue. <laughs> well, there you go, friends. James Lee Baker, it's called the Cowtown Blues. Other than moo, I mean, how did it move you? God, that was even worse. <laughs> Not bad. Uh, it's got a nice rolling feel to it. You can dance to it. You can sit down and tap your toes to it. Uh, I think that uh, Mr. Uh, Lee Baker... Uh, has got himself a pretty nice little song there. Uh, I'm not sure of how successful it will be on a commercial basis because I think it needs a bit more polishing production-wise. But, uh, you know, he's got a good bass there, and uh, it's something that you can listen to and, and feel. And uh, so I wish him luck with it. Yeah. I agree. It's uh, it's definitely got a hook. I think uh, I can I can hear it being played on country stations, uh, perhaps not to, you know, the modern country station, although it's got a, it's got a nice, uh, uh, pop blues feel to it. So, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we hear more of James Lee Baker and the Cowtown Blues. Thank you very much there, uh, John Bon Jovi, ladies and gentlemen, the legendary John Bon Jovi, who joins us here every week and help us, helps us negotiate the waters that, uh, we sail our boat through here on Blog Talk Radio on the David Bowers Awards where we salute Mary Perry, accredited disability representative in Rochester, New York, who helps underwrite, actually, she does underwrite the David Bowers Awards on Rochester Free Radio. And for that, Mary Perry, we get our, our love and respect. We salute you, Mary Perry. This is the show, of course, where every show is an award show because there are so many. And if you're not aware of that, you will be in the next few months because... We're headed into awards season, and uh, there will be more award shows on. And <laughs> sometimes I think there are more award shows than there are people to win the awards. More award uh, show than you can uh, than you can shake a moo cow to, or, or shake an award at. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But this is the original one where you get to pick the award winners along with us. And there's no nominating panels, no voting, no nothing. You think somebody has done something musically great or incredibly stupid, uh, drop us a line to david at bdavidbowers.com. Tell us who you think it is and why, and uh, maybe we'll use your award right here on the show. Now, of course, since every show is an award show on this show, then uh, obviously every one of our guests is an automatic award winner, and we like to look at it that way. If you get on the show... It's because you're good and you have just received an award, the award of being a guest on the David Bowers Award. And today, our first the David Bowers Award, well, we're going to ruffle some feathers and, uh, and get ready because we're going to be getting some emails on this one. But I, I just, I can't hold it back any longer. I'm wondering how and when Hard Rock got the right to appropriate the entire genre of rock and roll. Have you noticed, if you go online, or anywhere else for that matter, uh, hard rock has labeled itself classic rock as if it's the only part of rock and roll. Everything else is who knows what. I, I don't know, pop, soft rock, whatever you want to call it, but hard rock is a form of rock and roll, just as bluegrass is a form of country, but so is pop. And soft rock, more. As a matter of fact, even some adult contemporary classifies as rock and roll. Now, for those of us who are old enough to have lived through the birth of what we call rock and roll, we salute the trendsetters and the true creators. And really, you know, a lot of people trace it back to Elvis Presley. Uh, it actually goes farther back than that. Well, Elvis was the one who probably did the most of any one individual to bring rock and roll into the mainstream, you have to go back much further to get to the origins of rock and roll. They go back before Hank Ballard and the Midnighters, who were an outgrowth of early R&B, a movement precipitated by the migrant, the migration rather of post-Civil War slaves to the major cities like New York, St. Louis, Detroit, and others. You go back to Gene Vincent and the Blue Caps in the real early 50s, 
really rockabilly. Rock and roll was an outgrowth of several genres, uh, most all genres of the day, as a matter of fact. Rock and roll came out of the blues. It came out of country rockabilly. Uh, it came out of uh, southern gospel. And it was being tested by the early R&B-itis like, like Big Joe Turner and the country crossovers like Gene Vincent, who experimented with making country music pop. Uh, it should noted that it should be noted that country itself actually evolved out of the genre known as Western music, and uh, rock also came from experimental pop stars. As Wikipedia states, rock and roll emerged as a defined musical style in the United States in the early to mid 1950s. It derived most directly from the rhythm and blues music of the 1940s which itself developed from earlier blues, boogie-woogie, jazz, swing music, and was also influenced by gospel, country, and western, and traditional folk music. And Wikipedia goes on to say rock and roll, in turn, provided the main basis for the music that, since the mid-1960s, has been generally known simply as rock music, end quote. Well, this is the true classic rock. It's all of these things and more. It's further evolved into many sub-genres that encompass virtually all variations today. Classic rock? Well, there wouldn't be a Beatles or Rolling Stones if there wasn't an Ivory Joe Hunter or the Ink Spots. There wouldn't be a Def Leppard or Guns N' Roses if there wasn't a Bob Wills, one of the first to add an electric guitar to his band way back in 1938. All right. Johnny Barfield's Boogie Woogie. And the term rock and roll goes back at least to the early 1800s when it was first used. Look it up. Quite a history. Rock and roll, classic rock, to me, encompasses a whole heck of a lot more than just hard rock. And to me, rock and roll is a lot of forms of music, not just hard rock. John Bon Jovi well, Your you, opinion. Yeah, well, and, and I agree with you, but you know, you can't overlook uh, some of the other pioneers like Carl Perkins. Uh, you can't overlook oh, Chet Atkins or uh, or even Les Paul. I mean, these without without those three people that I just mentioned, again, you you wouldn't have. You might not have a Gene Vincent if it weren't for them. You might not have uh, Frankie I, Avalon. I don't disagree with you at all. I was only mentioning. <sighs> Just, just a few of the names, and as you so rightly point out, you could add to that Carl Perkins. You could add a lot of names to it, and we would be here, <laughs> we'd be here for the whole hour mentioning the names. But uh, I was just using a couple of examples that, uh, you know, to emphasize my point. Rock and roll is a lot more than just hard rock. Or well, metal. absolutely. I mean, and, even uh, take a I, look I, at uh, somebody like Buck Owens. Uh, and, uh, you know, they're going to put me in the movies. They're going to make a big star out of me. Well, guess who else did that? The Beatles did that, and they had a huge yeah. hit with yep. it. Exactly, and I, uh, and they will be, the, they, they were the, one of the first to admit that they were influenced a lot by not only the blues, but also by American country music, yep. which, as I stated, is an outgrowth of what used to be Western music. It didn't used to be country, and later it became country Western, and eventually the Western got dropped, and today it's country, and now it's evolving into what's called Americana music, which is really a more broader encompassing of the genre. But, uh, yeah, I just bristle every time I hear uh, a, a rock artist, someone that does the heavier rock, uh, refer to themselves as classic rock. No, to me, classic rock is the early roots rock and roll. Uh, you know, as, as I said, the, uh, the blues, even the swing music out of the 40s, the rockabilly out of the late 40s and 1950s, uh, and, and so on. As it evolved, Elvis, Elvis was a turning point. He was the king in that he was the one that actually broke down the barrier and got mainstream acceptance.